The boy Dub Deuce in the building. What up, what up, what up? It is That Guy Dub, and I am back with another video. How you guys doing? At the end of the day, shout it, I'm good money. And today, 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 we've got a special guest in the building. You saying he's back going viral because everybody in the streets is worried about what's going on in this Freak Nick documentary from the world's most controversial crew, you two live crew, Brother Marquise. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm fine. I'm fine. How's everybody else doing? It's good to be here, man. We finally didn't got on. We finally didn't hooked up and could do this interview. Yes, and, sir. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's a pleasure. It's an honor. So you said, uh, so how's, how's things going on in your life right now? I oh, mean, things are beautiful. I can't complain. I'm living. I'm living. You know, it's good to be seen and heard and not viewed, you know? I, I know that's right. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Well, yeah. so... Well, I guess we're going to start off. We're going to start off. You said get the cat out of the bag, right? You said, but uh, everybody talking about this Freak Nick documentary. Uh -huh. And uh, you, there's a lot of people that are trying to stop it from coming out. And you said, and with you being a part of a group that was basically the soundtrack for Freak Nick, how worried do some of these people need to be? I have no idea. Uh, this is the first time that that uh that i'm being aware of a freak of a freak nick documentary nobody has called me to uh yeah to uh talk about it really so they, no so i guess they probably have uncle luke and people like that you know well you yeah. said you're, ju you're just as important you saying so yeah, yeah 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 i guess it's i'm just as important but you know how it goes no of course you politics know, is, yeah we're, we're a record industry with black folks you know uncle luke probably won all of the shine so you know Probably think it's not enough room under the spotlight for me to, you know, to be on something with him like that. Unfortunately, it's just one of those kind of situations. But I'm cool. Me and you talking about it, so absolutely, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you, it's like okay. I always wanted to ask this question because my my father went. You said my father used to be down there all the time selling T-shirts and stuff like that. You said like if y'all had camera phones back then, you said like. <laughs> How many? <laughs> what, what? What's some of the things that we not gonna see that, that we missed on VHS tape that we would have seen on camera phones? Oh man, y'all would have seen a lot of things. You know, after Freak Nick, you know, after Freak Nick, you know, doing Freak Nick and after Freak Nick, you know, after everybody go home and all of that, you might have to slide in one of them clinics and get you an evaluation. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. That's how. Yeah, that's how raw and crazy it was. <laughs> you said like well like <laughs> I can only imagine yeah, I can only imagine I was watching a, a documentary well, it wasn't even a documentary it was a, a a news report from like back in the 90s from like Channel 2 when Monica Kaufman you said she had a little little fro in the front you right, said, but, right. uh, you said it was just talking about how crazy it was but you just like so like when you guys would go to perform and hit stages what you said what was the energy like he was saying like because I, I i see the energy with the with the newer generation you said so like i definitely want to ask what was the energy like back then we said when everything was at its peak man when we did freak nick man um i lived in atlanta at that time so i enjoyed freak nick during the day and i had concerts on both of those nights friday and saturday so it was like awesome you know everybody would you know it's like it's like, man, they would go hard. They would know every word and the girls would get up and dance. And, you know, of course, they didn't hardly have any clothes on. And it was just that freak Nick vibe. It was just real sexual. It was just loose. It was summertime. And it was just all about a party. And and and, 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 and girls was in the South. They was representing the South and wherever they was from. Mm -hmm. So they did there in the daytime. And the venues that we performed at in the freak Nick were like super, super packed. So... I had a great time on both of the Freak Neeks. I had an awesome time. That's like a highlight of my life and my career because the music was popping at that time and I was just out, you know, with people and I was just out in the city on the scene riding around in my convertible and girls jumping in and jumping out. And man, I had a ball. They need to bring that back. They definitely do. But it's like, do you think in the era of cancel culture, do you think that it would survive the way it used to be? No, nah, it ain't gonna never be the way it used to be because they would actually block off the streets. You know, they you know, they shut it down now because it was so many people that they, they had Atlanta on gridlock. They couldn't move. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, so yeah. if, if it can be a more of a smaller, intimate and contained environment, it would probably be it'll 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 probably come off. 
But as far as taking over the whole city, I don't think I don't think it'll never be another time like that. I don't I don't think so yeah, either. So either. No, they ain't taking over. They ain't gonna let them take over the city like that no more. Oh no! You said no, it's no. like you said it's like it's funny because you said I was having this conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about um we were talking about how like about this documentary and they were talking about uh how many of the women that are like oh my god you said Megan the Stallion and Cardi B you said oh my god that is trash but we're out there in them freak knee streets doing that and then some but now have so much to say you know so it's like so in your opinion it's like how do you feel about the hypocrisy when it comes to certain people when it comes to generation generations of music well you know everybody is going to have their own little say so about about uh a genre of music so now that i'm glad that rap music has gotten so big that we can have genres of music inside the genre you right. know what i mean so you got down south rap and then you got new york rap then you got sexual rap and then you have uh like what i call uh what they call the drill music which is like gang bang rap and a rap with a lot of criminality into it Crim cr yeah criminality and um People are going to have a whole bunch to say about it. And, and it all depends on what type of genre of music that they're in. You know, everybody want to think that they're so much of uh, that they're so much of the kings and the queens of what they do. So you have to be kind of sense. People are sensitive out there now. So you have to be kind of mindful of what you say, because like some of these rappers with this little money right now, you say a certain thing, they want to go off on you. But mm -hmm. I, I am glad that rap has made it this far to where we can have five genres within the hip hop genre itself. You know? Right. You said me being a student and a, you said a fan of hip hop. You said like when you, you, you spoke on the, uh, the drill music to me is like the, my issue with drill music <clears throat> is because it's, it's breaking. It's, it's it's breaking down the conversation, but people are still not getting it because in a lot of these drill songs, people are self snitching. Oh yeah, and, definitely. And I think it's it's because if people don't understand, there's a difference between self snitching and calling for help. Right. Now you say if you saying me and Ray, it was five o'clock on the dot and we robbed the spot, and you put it on record, they can use that because you just told on yourself. That's right. That's right. But, but if somebody breaks in your home and you you let five of them off and they behind or whatever, and then you call law enforcement to come handle it, that's not snitching. You no, just not snitching. steals your car, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's not snitching. That is your that that is one of your civil rights, uh one of your first amendment rights to protect yourself in your home. Mm -hmm. You know, especially if you're in a state that's a, a gun carrying state, you know, that's self defense. Can't nobody break in on your property and, and do anything and, and do anything to you harmful like that without you defending yourself. But yeah, these cats these cats are dry snitching on themselves, mm -hmm. and the prosecutors and the DA and the, all of the alphabets are using that against them. Are using that against them? They're building cases mm -hmm. off of verses that come out of songs. Yeah, just and see that's why it's crazy with you saying with the whole the YSL thing. And of course, I don't really want to talk about that because that's that's right, not important right. to what we're talking about. But just just expounding on what we were just talking about. But you know, it's like. You see, because hip hop has come so far. You see, because like I, I had a, a, a conversation with a buddy of mine who's a pioneer DJ from uh, New York named DJ Easy B, and he was oh, talking about oh Easy B. You know Easy B, Easy B, and Easy Lee. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know Easy B. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know you, you know I know all of the first generation of rap guys from New York. Definitely. Oh, yeah, that's my guy. Yeah. But um, we were talking about it just like at one point in time, you said hip hop. We were allowed on the corner of the stage. He said, mm -hmm. now we got arenas and you said, and things like that. Now it's like we're the, the most copied culture in the world. That's you right. Know? So being a, you said, being a veteran in this hip hop game, how does it feel to ha literally have lived through all of that and into where we are now in hip hop? It's a blessing. It's a blessing. And I'm grateful to still be here mm -hmm. celebrating 50 years of hip hop with, with uh, uh, you know, with all of my counterparts and my colleagues. It is beautiful, man. It's a blessing. And I'm mindful of it every day that, you know, uh, uh, it is an honor. It is an honor, man. And and and, and uh, it does me, uh, uh, it makes me feel good. You know, it's worthwhile. It's self-fulfilling. It's self-fulfilling to be a part of that, you know, to be a part of uh, 
rap culture and to really be embedded in it real, real, real deeply because I went to the Supreme Court and won the ruling on censorship for the First Amendment rights and I had the explicit lyric sticker. So I really did a lot for the culture right. as far as people expressing themselves artistically with their choice of words and, 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 and their choice of material. But see, like that, that in, in, in within itself is also funny because you see, because we do have our First Amendment rights and you things like that. Because certain people, just like there was a teacher, I can't remember where she was from, but she, I, she was basically, she, uh, they were, I think they were uh, Huckleberry Finn, but they were reading the book and then uh, something like that. And then uh, she kept, kept calling the, the student the N word. And she was like, well, that's my First Amendment right to use. And I can say what I want to say. And I was like, now you can say what you want to say. Now, if you get hit in the mouth after you say what you say, now that's something totally different because right. you, because there's total you know, because there's all different areas that you can go with your First Amendment rights. You know, saying like, yeah, you can call me the N word. But like I said, if I knock your teeth out, you know, saying, hey, consequences, you know, what I'm saying? but yeah. but. You said when you guys won at the Supreme Court, you said, like, what was that feeling? It was great. It was great. It felt like it felt like I went up against the whole system and the establishment and stood up and won and won with my civil rights as being a black man. And it was the first time that the Constitution was actually used to protect a black man. The First right. Amendment protected us, you know, because if you still look back in the Constitution, it still says in there that we are still three fifths of a human. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. So some people look at that, they're the only three-fifths of a human, so their lives don't mean anything. You right. know what I mean? So for us to actually go and win and stand up and go against the establishment and have the First Amendment really uh, stand up behind us and uh, 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 really let the whole world know that we are protected by our civil rights, that was big. That was big. Right. Yeah, well, that was big. You said, well, with that being said, how much of you are are you still an activist for your First Amendment rights? Would you like, would you teach the youth you sent to understand their rights as citizens? If that opportunity came up, yes, definitely. I definitely will expound on that, and I definitely will share some of my knowledge on it. You just like um, when I, we talk, we spoke briefly about uh, you said things we wanted to talk about. It was about the uh, you said. With kids, you said, because we're in a different time now. We have, look, we're right now. You and I, we're on social media right now. Exactly. You know, said so. Like, as somebody that you said has fought and you said and has went through all different avenues. You said before internet, during internet, and everything. Like, how do you? What would you tell children that are trying to get in, into this social media space that are possibly not ready for it? Uh, what would I tell the kids? Yes. I would tell the kids uh, today that they need to do their history, that they need to go back and especially the kids that are into music and hip hop into the culture, that they need to go back and study the culture, study the pioneers, study some of the guys that came along and, 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 and uh, were groundbreaking and what they were doing in their music in their uh, artistic form and creativity and study that to know about it, expound on it so that you can be well-rounded on what you're going to be coming up against. Right. Exactly. You, so where, where does this newer generation of music sit? You sit with you. You said, cause like, cause you saying like the whole nineties bass movement was a for real movement. You said right. like it was fun. It was party. You said, it's like, so where, where does music sit with you now? Uh, well, it's a lot of criminality into the music right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of gang culture in the certain genres of the music that's in hip hop, a lot of sexuality. I think it needs to go back to its rarest form, to its purity, to the state of us really enjoying ourselves and being kind of more creative. Even though I know it's a culture shift and everybody goes one way when it's moving one way, but I still think it it's it's artists that's doing it, but I still think we need more positive songs. You got an album with some of these ratchet songs. Those some positive songs that's on your album too. That's uplifting and edifying. That kind of help build up the community. Absolutely, you said that to me personally. That's why you said in, in today's era of music. That's why you said J Cole and a Kendrick Lamar are in my playlist for that, those oh, yeah. exact reasons. You know what I'm saying? 
And those are some of my favorite artists as well. I love J. Cole. I love uh, Kendrick Lamar. Now, on the West Coast, I'm seeing that on the West Coast, they really stick to their, the West Coast sticks to their, you know, they sticks to where it came from, from them. I mm -hmm. like that about them. They don't try to change up, sound like anybody else to where the South, if I'm in the South and I try to come out probably with one of my records, they want me to try to sound like these young guys. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm and 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 I really want to. I'm grown right now, so I'm grown and sexy. I want to be grown. I want to say something that's you know, you know, it it ain't really all about that. But it seems like for some reason the southern culture, the southern culture don't want to hear that. Right. If you if you ain't sounding like somebody from Atlanta, you ain't you ain't winning. I mean, unfortunately, <laughs> it's and that's I think because so many people, you saying. During the Freaknik era and even after, once you've seen Atlanta started booming, so many people came there. It's such a melting pot. It's rare that you will meet somebody, you saying inside of 285 that's been there their whole life. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, now. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. But when you meet somebody, when you get somebody homegrown from Atlanta, you will know it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. And he's like. <laughs> and it's like we Atlanta's even you said welcomed other you said people that are from other places like you know a ludicrous he's because he's yeah. from Chicago but you said he he definitely represented for Atlanta very well you said so I definitely yes. got to it's like definitely got to give it up for, it's and then what you being in Atlanta you you saying like you're still holding down the culture you said right. it's like and the fact that you know my brother you said it's like because my brother's out in the streets means you you outside you said so like, yeah. y'all are still you said involved with the people. So what is the reception that you get from people just being out in the streets to this day? Well, um, you know, people that came up with me, you know, in their forties or fifties, uh, it's nothing but love. Mm. It's nothing but love, you know, in our age group that came up, that came up, you know, in the first generation of rap kids or whatever. Uh, uh, it's beautiful, man. It's a lot of love. I receive a lot of love, man. And then people, people show me appreciation and I try to give it back to them. And that, you know, that keeps me going, you know, feel like that was my civic duty. This is my civic duty. So it's beautiful. It's beautiful, man. When somebody comes up to me, be like, man, I grew up on you and I got my behind whoop trying to sneak and listen to your tape <laughs> in the basement and all of that. I'm like, yeah, yeah. You know, it feels good. Yeah. You, it's like me coming up. I was you saying like I wanted to go. You said my dad was like, nah, nah, this, this ain't for you, youngster. This <laughs> <laughs> so it was like. But it was like I, so I was always fascinated with it. You said just like, let's take out you said whatever potential bad stuff allegedly happened or didn't happen. You said just the the culmination of black people coming together and you said that you said like of course it don't matter what because like hey when a, a sports team wins you see a bunch of white people flipping over cars and setting buildings on fire because their team won. You said so like we we take away from that, but we talk about just the fun the you said the people coming together like the job fairs you've seen the the you said, like all of that stuff like this it was like we don't have that in hip-hop anymore and you said i like like you were saying earlier i, I wish like the, the the togetherness would come back you know what i mean no well you know um, hip-hop you know hip-hop is a community sometimes that doesn't give back to the real founders it can be real selfish mm -hmm. Hip hop, yeah, hip hop can be a real selfish, a selfish genre of music to where I'm gonna get on, I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna put my foot on everybody else's neck because that's what they're doing. But see, dude, see, that's the crazy thing because like now we, like I said, we're in the age of uh, social media. Everything can be monetized now, so there's enough yeah, money yeah. out here for everybody. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like, you said just like with. With you, you said speaking to me. You saying you're blessing me. You saying with your presence, I'm, you saying I'm doing the same for you. We're sitting there. You, we're helping each other. I don't. You just, I don't got to leave today and be like, you know what? I'm not messing with him no more. Or, or, you said because you ain't done nothing to me. If we could try to get some money together, let's get some money together because, like I said, there's enough for everybody out here to eat. And yeah, well, unfortunately, a lot of us don't uh, feel that way, and it's mm -hmm. only the it's only the nature of the beast, mm -hmm. you know. Like I feel as though in hip hop, sometimes the guy that doesn't have the most creative ability that doesn't have the most creative ability is going to do the most stealing. So you, it's just like the streets now. Yeah. It's just like the streets now and even worse. I mean, unfortunately, that's true because they brought the streets <laughs> into it. Use it that's what I'm more talking into, about. You know what I'm saying? That's, what like, more, that's right. 
because right. at, at one point in time, like you, you like you think in the nineties when they were speaking about you saying violent lyrics and stuff like that, storytelling is gone. It's, you said nobody's really telling stories anymore. You saying like I, I missed that. You saying just like I said, just there's not a whole lot of music. You said like not right now. Like they're going to sit there and want me to pull out the box Chevy with with the two twelves in the back and go. You saying beating down Ponce de Leon. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's just now not. The music, now the music right now make you want to go to your safe, count your money, make you want to go stand on the corner, sell something, or go to your trunk and pull your gun. Right. <laughs> so you were talking about earlier that you know, they, uh, people were trying to get you back in the studio to uh, make some booty music. Is right. that is that still fun for you? Uh, yeah, the studio is always fun when I get myself back in rap shape and back in rap mode. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I'm in the process right now of uh, putting some things together, and I think I might stay in it too. I might stay in it for a while. Even if the records don't do anything, you know, because everybody ain't going to like you. We're getting older. And hip hop, unfortunately, is one of those genres to where they don't reach back and pull the older guys up. Right. Well, that's why you say, I make it a point with my platform. You said mm -hmm. to use it because even though I'm I'm a, I'm a small finish in this pun, if I could sit there and you saying the bush up with at least by sharing or you saying like or something, you know, what I'm saying it's like, but that's just me. And I like and. I try to surround myself with people who will do the same. So you that you have a, you, I mean, you have pockets of fan bases out here that are still willing to give you your flowers and propel you upwards. You know what I'm saying? Because yes, we yes, believe yes, in yes, you. Yes, we do. We do. We 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 have a lot of people that are in hip hop and of the genre that thinks exactly like we do about it. And so a lot of people, and especially, I'm glad it's 50 years of hip hop right now because it's going to give people the opportunity to say, "Well, wow." Wow, let's reach back. Let's bring some of them back. Let's have some events. You know what I'm saying? Let's honor these guys that started it first. You know what I'm saying? And, and mix it all up together. So it's coming around. It's mm -hmm. coming around. It's coming around. It definitely. It, it definitely is. And I, I think because you see, we do have a lot more people that are stepping away from the young. You said, like, because like we just letting the young people be the young people. But I think you said, because I think especially like after. DJ Academics had said what he said about the old and dusty pioneers using they ain't got no money, even though he, I guess, tried to clarify and say he was only talking about one person or whatever. Right. But when LL Cool J came, I was like, no, no, no. You're not going to talk about the OGs like that. And you put That's academics right. in his place. I've, I've really seen you said more, you said other OGs like sticking, you said coming more together you said, and doing more together, like to counteract the BS and the nonsense that the young these idiots are doing, you know what I mean? That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. And 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 L is a good guy, great guy. I had a chance to meet him, I had a chance to meet him, and I did see that too. And, and I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah. I click, I clicked on, and I hit that, and I was like, yeah, we supporting you, right? Yep, yep. So you said like um, nowadays it's it's funny. You just because like I said. We talked earlier about you said people that might you said have something to say against Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion and stuff like that, because to me, all it's really doing is championing you guys' movement forward. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, so if you like you, of course you're going to have certain people that are going to talk smack. But you said, how do you feel about when you said when something that you guys came up with is still being championed to this day? It's going to always be champion because you got certain people that, you know, right wing, left wing or grown or old or coming from whatever background that they come from. They still might find it kind of offensive and disrespectful. Right. So that is the that is the American way. You can feel like you want to feel you can protest about it and you can say what you want to say about it. So that's never going to go away. The only thing that's uh, to our advantage is. Is that the artist is never going to go away? The more you talk about Megan Thee Stallion, the, the, the less clothes she going to put on. You <laughs> I know that. Me? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. It definitely. It was. It was one thing I definitely wanted to ask you. It was like because there was a scene in the movie Straight Outta Compton when uh you said they were pulling up to the venue and uh, the people got the steam rolling, they're rolling over the tapes and setting fires and stuff like that. And then Easy E goes, "Hey, they could do what they want. They." They bought them motherfuckers. You, is that kind of how y'all felt when people were protesting and you saying they felt a way about y'all's music? Of course. In some instances, yeah, keep yeah, keep uh talking about us, keep feeding into the controversy, and we're gonna keep selling records and we're gonna keep getting more notoriety. 
off of you hassling us. So mm -hmm. yeah, it works out perfectly. When okay. you keep talking about us and trying to hassle us, it's more of a financial, it's more of a financial game with the exposure for us. Absolutely. And you said it's like because I used to be an artist myself. I don't do it anymore. I just hit I just hit 40. And I'm not saying that I can't if I wanted to, but I don't. That's not my thing anymore. But um and said, next next time you see Boogie, have him play you some of my music. You said, but whatever. But um <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> when you guys would get ready to go into the studio, like you said, I don't know what your you said your ritual was before you guys would sit there and record, like and you were telling these stories about like you said, were you partying or did like what like what was your writing process going into the studio like back in those days? Well, you know, after those first records hit, you know, my uh my whole outlook about it is I've been going here and I'm gonna try to say the most shocking thing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to say the most craziest most degrading this thing that I can say to really upset the to upset the establishment a little bit more. And that was as far as the political people, the local political people, and and really, you know, just try to use the shock value for my advantage. So it was just anything wild and super silly and kind of comical. Yeah, let's try it. Right. So you said like you guys like have I, I think you guys set the standard when it came to strip club music. Mm -hmm. Cause, and you see, you, you find a lot of artists trying to break their records, especially you send bass heavy records in like the strip clubs. Right. You said like, do you got, do you feel that you guys are getting your flowers for setting that, for planting that flag? Yeah. No, not really. No, not really. Again, I told you that this culture of hip hop is a very selfish culture. Mm -hmm. They will take from us, but will not give us the credit and the notoriety of where they got it from. Mm -hmm. But it's there. Like right now, all of the girls are using my type of music. Mm -hmm. You know, Sweetie, Sweetie, uh, you know, Cardi B, a little bit, Nicki Minaj, especially with the city girls. Mm -hmm. They're taking our sound and really exploiting it even more. Right, and it, and I guess it kind of fits a girl. Mm -hmm. It kind of fits a girl. You know what I mean? So, they, yeah, the women are keeping it going. Oh, they ain't giving. They ain't giving nothing back. Oh. You know that they ain't. They ain't making no mention of where they got it from or, or what. You know what I'm saying? These new kids don't care. Right, they don't it, care it, nothing about it. I do like the city girls because mm -hmm. they're from Miami, so they do try oh, cool. to keep that original sound going, mm -hmm. which is cool. Right. You know I mean, what what the home team, the home team usually pays the most homage. Mm -hmm. you know That's I mean? right. That's right. So, I mean, it's like, okay, you said like coming up, coming up and around Miami and stuff like what, what was Miami like back in the nineties? And it's like, is it because everybody said, oh, it's still the place to go now. Is it still the place to go as far as you know it? Or was it way better back in the it day? Was, it was kind of way better back then because nowadays, even though it was a lot of tourism going on then, but now it's a lot of us coming there. Mm. So it's turning South Beach into like a real ghetto. You feel me? Mm. Yeah. South Beach is like, yeah, you, you have to really, really be careful over there right now because you have every, you have people coming in from all over the country. Right. So, they're, so they're, they come down there with they mess, their local mess and, it just yeah, South Beach is just chaotic right now. It, 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 uh, Miami is cool, but as as far as the beach and and and, and all of that, they kind of give the city a bad name. Right. They kind of give the city a bad name. The out of towners. Right. Well, see, like um, one thing I was saying, they uh, they still do a lot of tours. You know, like with the <clears throat> Smokey Robinson's on tour right now. You yeah. Said, you said like Genuine's coming back, and he's like he's on tour, and you said it just. So, like, how fun is it to when you guys will be a part of these tours, like even you said now, you, is, is it you still getting you saying like, is it still live? Are y'all still just as amp backstage? Oh, man, well, it's, it's a little bit different, but the energy on stage is more better right now mm -hmm. because, you know, we're singing these nostalgic songs and people are really getting into them. So right. I like it. I like it better now. I like I, I like it. I actually like it better now. Tell you the truth. Right. Well, you mentioned 50 years in hip hop. Like when you were a teenager, did you imagine hip hop being 
go have gone this far because they've tried for years and years and years to get rid no, of hip hop. No, no, I no, no, I, I I didn't. I don't think a lot of guys knew that they would get this far and become actually a, a, a global sound, a, a corporate sound. You know what I'm saying? Things for advertisement. You can't go nowhere right now. You can't even turn on TV without hearing nothing that's related to hip hop. Right. Yeah. So like when you, you mentioned Sweetie and we mentioned Cardi B earlier, you said both Sweetie and Cardi B and Offset have had McDonald's items. You said, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You said depicted after them. Like how does as a hip hop fan and as, as a historian, how, did, how does that make you feel? It makes me feel like we didn't took over. We didn't took over the American culture, especially. Yep, they tried to stop it. They didn't think they didn't think rock and roll was going to be as big as it became. But now hip hop is the new rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're here. We're here. And you know, once we get in, we dominate things. Of course. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's like so. It's no surprise that none of us. <laughs> right. Right. <clears throat> You said, like, we talked about coming in and dominating. You said, like, one person that always gets a lot of flack is Le Le LeBron James. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I was listening to an interview with a Can what well, a, a interview with Candace Owens. She was sitting there talking about, oh, because well, uh, he wants to come off saying that us as black people are being hunted, which we are. You said mm -hmm. us as us as black people. You said we're being ostracized by the police and being abused by the police which we are, but because LeBron James has money, he shouldn't, he shouldn't speak on that kind of stuff, which I think is stupid because once you, you send, you get to a certain stature or status, like going back to what we said, reaching back to you saying to help our brothers, you said it's like, if something's going on in our neighborhood, yeah, we might not live in that neighborhood no more, but it's on us because if, if we want real change and now we have a bigger voice or a bigger platform to say something about it, I think it's the perfect thing to do. But then you got, like I said, Candace Owens people saying basically a shut up and dribble. You know what I'm saying? Well, uh, I'm not that familiar with Candace Owens, but you have to look at Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He stood up for civil rights. Mm -hmm. I think it was Bill Russell, Wilt Chamberlain. All of those guys stood up for civil rights back then. LeBron James, I like him because he stands up and he speaks out for his people, regardless of how much money he has. If it's something that's going on out there socially and, you know, people are dehumanizing black people, he uses this platform to speak on it. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and he was, doesn't care. And he doesn't care who don't like it. The league or nobody. <laughs> he does not care. <laughs> it's, it's funny because you see people like, well, LeBron James, he's just a kid from Akron and blah, 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 blah. Or he's this or he shouldn't speak on social issues or he shouldn't care about you saying his where he came from. LeBron James owns half of Akron. Like Le LeBron James is a man. LeBron James is a world renowned figure. Uh, 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 uh. That's major. So mm -hmm. and, and major in our culture. So if he says anything in our culture that is pertaining to the betterment of his people and our people, everybody going to listen and they're going to fall, fall, fall suit with him. Right. Gonna fall right in line with him. You Absolutely right. And we're going to switch gears a little bit. You said, because uh, like I said, that New York hat, I cannot not talk about New York. Right. You said, because like um, once again, when I was talking to Easy B, we brought up um documentaries or TV series for the for the culture. Mm -hmm. Have you seen uh, The Get Down on Netflix? Yes, I have. Tell me that wasn't the most accurate depiction of hip hop. I love The Get Down. I, I I love The Get Down, and Will Smith's son did a uh uh uh, uh yeah, yeah he did a heck of a job in there. That was yeah. nice. That was nice. I watched that whole series. I think I've watched about three times. I, I, I enjoyed watched it that, that whole much. series. That was dope. That mm. was dope. Now they need to come out with something similar to it. That's you know that's more up to date into what mm. what's going on now, and which I think that will happen. Mm. You know, because now you know we have to have series like that or series like that that are based in the early two thousands. I think mm. that would be dope in the nineties, the middle nineties, and the early two thousands. I think that would really be dope. Right, because you said like with me personally, because like, like I really hit my music peak. Like right around the 2000s, like I said, I'm a, I'm an 80s baby. Now, of course, I listen to music, but like once I got my own car and I was able to, you said, move around on my own, you said stuff like that. You know, what I'm saying? it's like it was back like when 
DJ Jelly and the big oomp camp and Jermaine Dupree's like all these everything that came out like everything was real bass saving when TI first came out. You saying just like he's like that was my like because like I said, I would hear my parents listen to music and stuff like that, or I'd listen to stuff with my friends, but then because it's a different feeling, like when you're in your car and it's just you, you got mm-hmm. your music, so you, you really get to feel the music. Cause for a long time I was just strictly using Jay-Z, Memphis Bleak, Danny Siegel, you said any Ja Rule, just it didn't make it had to be New York music. I was born in California, grew up in Georgia, but wouldn't listen to nothing but New York music. I don't know why, but that's just what it was. Wait, 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 you know that's you know that's where it came from. I'm on the same thing. I'm on the same thing to tell you the truth. I'm on the same thing. That's where it came from, and that's you know, that's the roots of it. You know, mm. New York, New York started it. You know, mm. New York started it. And it was it was funny because like I said, as a teenager. We'd go to these little team parties. They, they'd have them at the, like, the National Armory Guard in Marietta or even some, like little teen clubs and stuff like that. And it was just it was funny because like. He said, because like that's what like fight music would come out like, well, like, I don't know if you remember Baby D and you said yeah. the, the bit from Oak Camp, but you said like East Side versus West Side. Yeah, tear the club up. Tear the club man. up. Man, it's like, I, I love that song so much. And you said, or like, you said, Lil John, put your hood up. It's like, yeah, I love yeah, this song yeah. so much, but it's about to be one. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's you to me, the, like, you can't do that now. You can't do that no. now. You can't go to playing them songs. They really going to put the, they going to get with the guns. Mm-hmm. Them young kids gonna get the guns now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Talking about <Right>. all that. <laughs> you said, well, I, the reason I brought that up was to say this: like, these and like, security and police are, were on standby because mm-hmm. if they knew those songs were gonna get played, right? You said, was that history repeating itself when it came to you guys hitting the stage? Um, yeah and no. Um. I guess the security had to protect the venue, but you got to think that we wasn't really that violent. Mm-hmm. You know, we was more on the sexual tip. So, right. Yeah, yeah. We just was hoping that it wouldn't be an underage girl trying to come up there and take her clothes off while we singing. Right. That's what we had to worry about. You right. know what I mean? It's it wasn't like, like nobody. It wasn't like nobody finna go home and go outside and shoot nobody. Everybody trying to grab a girl and go home and get booed up after one of our concerts, right? Know? Or go to the script club or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's like what, uh, what I was. Excuse me. What I was talking about was like, the, like I said, the security. Because you said like, because yeah, when the fight music would come, they'd be on high alert. But you said when the media and politicians and stuff was on y'all's asses like back pockets, yeah, said, it's like. Was the was the uh the security and the police was it kind of like the same? Like no, I'm not talking about like I said as far as you know what I'm saying like worrying about somebody gonna fight, but worrying about you saying something that they don't want you to say. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, 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 and no, because you know I can remember uh, going into a lot of these towns, especially in the Bible Belt, that before we would get there, it would actually be a uh, law enforcement. You know, coming with the long list of rules and regulations on what we can do and what we cannot say. Mm-hmm. And, you know, being us, we would say them anyway. You know what I mean? So, yeah, there was a lot of security. And, and then again, too, with us, by going to the Supreme Court, there was a lot of it was a lot of people that was watching us that we didn't that we weren't aware mm-hmm. that was watching us. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was all it was all kind of police. uh, 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 uh in the concerts with us, definitely. Wow. Oh my goodness, it's like right now, if you could pick, like you said, like you know, how like you said, DC Young Fly and them, they got the '85 South show. Yeah, right. You said like if you could pick, you said your '85 South esque show that you could travel with right now. Who you said who would you go on tour with? Uh. I would probably go on tour with some of my counterparts, like uh, probably like JT Money, Sixty Nine Boys, uh, Splat Pack, uh, probably like Uncle Luke, uh, Low Rider, uh, City Girls, Trina, Trick Daddy, that sort of thing. Right, and you said I've always been a huge you saying Trick Daddy fan. You said like, right. it's like yeah. This like I just remember like back in the day when we had the box. So you said like there was like the channels would just they just played videos all day. You uh-huh. said I used to love it when you said those those songs would come on, man. Yep. 
Yep, that's that is a part of our that was a part of our growing up. We grew up with that. Mm -hmm. Well, you said uh, I'm also a car guy, so you just, like when what was the the bad the best car that you've ever you ever owned? Uh, a, a, a black on black '67 Caprice Impala convertible. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I had a few Benzes, a nice Jeep. I had a, I had a nice Cadillac too, '86 Custom convertible, Coupe de Ville convertible. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Easy. So, like, what are you still in, into the car culture? Yeah. Yes and no. Uh, I kind of like to look at them, uh, like right now, more than you know. I would like to own one. You know, I'm mm. kind of low key right now, so there ain't nothing wrong with that. I take a old truck or something, or something to get around in that's good on gas. Right. Yep. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. You said, well, we're going to go ahead and end this thing off. You said, I'm going to let you enjoy your Sunday, brother. Yes, right. So I'm going to get me a good Sunday dinner right now. Some cornbread and baked chicken and all of that. That good, that good Southern gourmet food that we like on the Sunday. I know that's right. Well, let everybody know your social medias. You said, if they wanted to uh, follow you or you said, uh, see what you got going on. Uh, Brother Marquis under official Brother Marquis underscores on Instagram and Facebook. That's right. Make sure y'all check out Pilates by Raven too. If you're into working out, fitness, and nutrition and all that, that's my daughter. Uh, Pilates by Raven. Uh, she was also on the second season of uh, Love Is Blind. She has a blue check. I don't even have a blue check on Instagram. I'm not verified yet. Yeah, we need to holler. Well, you, well, you know they're selling them now. It's selling them right now. And I don't even want that. <laughs> I think I heard LeBron James say he don't even care nothing about it. He ain't paying. He ain't paying that money. Here you right. go, blue check. <laughs> it is what it is. Right, nothing wrong with that. You said what, I post social media. Right. You yeah. said. Well, you said this has been an awesome time. I have to thank you again. You said once again, brother. I'm giving your flowers while you're still here. You said you have been amazing, and I thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, man. And pass the word. I'm doing podcasts. If you got some more of your podcast buddies out there, y'all hit me. Yep. Yep. Okay. Definitely, definitely. And without further ado, this has been That Guy Dub. Make sure y'all like, share, comment, subscribe, turn on that bell notification so you don't miss another video. Without further ado, I love you. Brother Marquise loves you. We checking out of here, man. Peace. Ooh. All right. <clears throat>